Yep, it looks good, Kim. <clears throat> Great, got it, thanks. It jumped out when I accepted the recording in progress. Let's put it back up. Let's see, let's make certain that's working. Yep, share sound is on. Great. So today what I want to do is take the opportunity and talk to you about the consumer's perspective. We do a lot of work here at Cotton Incorporated related to agricultural sustainability, supply chain, and to getting the information out. But you may not know what the consumer truly thinks. And so to look at that, we're going to talk today about their beliefs. We're going to look at what actions they're taking or maybe they're not taking. We'll look at what the drivers are for apparel purchases. Approximately 85% of the cotton fiber goes into apparel and home textiles. So it's important to understand what consumers care about when buying clothing. And then last but not least, we're gonna show you how we've leveraged this research over the years to utilize in our messaging to consumers and to help bring this to the forefront of their awareness levels and hopefully actionable statements. So as we start looking, though, one of the things in the industry, many of us on this call today are familiar with different sustainability terms that exist. We've heard of things such as circular fashion, microplastic pollution, natural, organic carbon emissions. But the question truly is, is what do consumers know? in this area and what do they understand because when you're so close to it in the industry it's not necessarily what is understood by a consumer so we're going to share research with you today and current research that we're going to look at pre-pandemic and post-pandemic but before i jump into that i want to let you know that at cotton incorporated we've been doing consumer sentiment research on the environment since 2003, so literally almost 20 years. And it's not just with consumers that we do that, just looking at sentiment, what do you think about certain terms and what are your actions, but we've talked to consumers around the world jointly with Cotton Council International in 10 different countries on subjects such as how does the environment impact uh, apparel, home textiles, non-woven products, baby care, the durability. What about natural dyes? Looking into places such as microplastics, of course, agricultural practices, logos, textile certifications, and even trying to better understand gaps in the supply chain and what they need to know. So we have a breadth and a depth of research here that we, we feel comfortable talking about what consumers do. <clears throat> so first, let's look at sustainability concerns. We're going to come into current day, though. Don't worry, I'm not taking you through the 20 years. This chart asks consumers, and I'm focusing on the U.S. for this presentation, not the other 10 countries or nine countries. Um, are consumers more or less concerned today about the environment than they were a year ago? And what we can see is that 55% say they are more concerned. 29% about the same and 16% less concerned. But we have seen this number 55% accelerate over the pandemic when consumers had time to be exposed and contemplate and be at home and think about what this means. And this is in general. And when we talk to them in general about the environment, what we find is that this is what matters to them. Consumers talk about climate change and global warming. That's not surprising. It's what's in the media. It's what they see a lot of, but it's also number one on their list. Then water quality, pollution, air quality, scarcity, or will we run out of different types of resources to utilize, and land pollution. Now, when we ask this specifically for apparel, though, this starts to shift. And what we see is that the number one concern is water quality, and then number two is air quality. But if you think about apparel and the supply chain and what that means, what consumers are aware of, it makes sense. Also with water quality, microplastics have been in the media, so that rises. Then we see climate change, land pollution, and scarcity. So we start to see some familiarity with what could impact apparel purchases. But when they tell us they care about that, we want to know, will it really influence their decision to make a purchase? And we ask about different product categories, not just apparel. And, and this chart, this was a study in 2021, we asked the consumer, Will sustainability influence your purchase in food, personal care, clothing, or home textiles? And we can see in 2017 that food was already at two-thirds of consumers saying it matters. 
we know that matters to them. It's mattered for years when you think about organic purchases and how it's grown and what happens with that. But there were increases over the pandemic period. But what really matters is look at the percentage point jumps in personal care, clothing, and home textiles. Over 10 percentage point increases in consumers that say they care about or that this could influence their purchase of items. That's significant over a short period of time. Now, this leads, attitudes can lead into behaviors. It doesn't mean it's what they're doing, but it does mean their attitudes are starting to change and there's some familiarity in this area. So we want to look at some of those terms that I showed you earlier and what consumers really understand they mean, though, not just maybe what we think we're telling them. So let's start with environmentally friendly. When we ask consumers, what does that mean to you? The first answer we get, 38% say no harm to the environment. Whatever that means, however you want to define it, don't harm our environment. And then 27% of consumers say that it's biodegradable, it's renewable. And that, again, goes back to don't harm the environment. They're not going to define that for us, but that's what they believe. And not only do they not want any harm to the environment, they expect retailers and brands to ensure that doesn't occur. So they expect them to put policies in place and, and, and to be certain that we're taking care of the environment. Another term that we throw around all the time is sustainable. So when you talk to consumers, though, about sustainability in clothing, they'll tell you that number one to them, well, that means it must last a long time or it must be durable. When I spend my money, it's going to be worth the cost that I pay for it. It's going to last. It's not going to wear. It's not going to decay. Then we see 23% go to the environment. 18% say that sustainable clothing can be recycled. And 7%, we see the word natural come in. So their term of sustainable can be different than what we're intending it to be in the industry. In circular fashion, this is one that makes me smile. When we ask consumers about this, 57% said, I have no idea what that means. Can, I can't imagine. 15% though said that fashion styles will repeat over time. So think about the 80s coming back, maybe, right? The 80s or the 90s, different fashion styles. 12% get it right, recycle old garments to make new ones, or that it's environmentally friendly, sustainable clothing. So what you can see is that there's opportunity here for education, but there is not knowledge. So there's a lot of opportunity for us in the industry, cotton industry specifically, to educate what this means and what this means to us. And it's important that these terms that you understand too, they're not regulated in our industry today. There are not firm definitions and agreed upon standards for all of these. So there are different messages going to the consumer. Microplastics, however, is an area that has definitely gained traction. In 2017, when we started asking about awareness among consumers, 17% were aware of microplastics. Today, that's grown to 39%. And that's because of all of the different industries being involved and being behind the work and the damage that microplastics does to our environment. Now, of those that are aware of uh, microplastics, 64% says that microplastic pollution would impact their purchases without a doubt. Now, knowing this, though, if that impacts it, we have to find a way to give them a solution, to give them a call to action. So what can they do? Well, they could check the label for cotton because we know cotton biodegrades from our product development research at Cotton Incorporated. Those are the type of messages we have to start to give consumers. So today, when you look at consumers, 40% tell us that they're willing to put effort into reducing their environmental footprint. And this 40% number, you're going to see again by other resources. This is Cotton Incorporated research, but other areas too are seeing the same types of numbers that we are. And this is integral to understanding not only are their attitudes shifting, but they say that they'll put effort into it. So what type of effort might consumers be willing to put in to protect the environment? Well, in a recent study, we gave them these actions listed on the page, everything from recycling to buying energy saving appliances to purchasing local made uh, to limiting water usage. One that I thought about this morning that we did not put on here was turning off the lights. I don't know how many of you have children in the household, but mine cannot turn off the lights. With increasing electricity and other things, that's going to become more important in the environment we live in today. But let's take a look and see what they say. So this chart shows you the actions in total that consumers 
will take. Number one should not be surprising to anyone. They'll recycle cans and bottles. It's convenient. Many consumers across the U.S. today have a bin. It's easy to put it in or at work or when they go to other restaurants and things, you sort through it. We've made it convenient. They know how to do that. Then when you look at consumers that are buying energy-saving appliances or willing to recycle clothing, we see that those consumers that over the age of 40 are significantly more likely to do those two activities than consumers under 40. It's still the top three activity, though. We'll, of course, come back to recycling clothing. Uh, limit water usage. So think of, of a variety of ways you can do that. The simplest way, of course, is turn it off when you brush your teeth. Other things like that, the shower, take shorter showers, purchasing locally made. And then when we get to the next four items on this list, consumers under the age of 40 are significantly more likely to do these than consumers over the age of 40. And that is intentionally to go for and look and buy sustainable clothing, uh, to reduce their consumption of meat, that's on their radar. Check corporate policies for activities that impact the environment or social justice. And then also look at driving an electrical vehicle. If you look at those under 40, 21% said they're willing to do that. They didn't say they own them. They said they would be willing to do that. So you can start to see some differences by the ages on what consumers do. But when we look at those numbers and 29% in total said that they would be willing to purchase sustainable apparel, we want to truly understand what the purchases drivers are for clothing. So when we ask consumers that, and we've been asking this for more than 20 years, the, the level of these really haven't changed that much. The first, the first area that matters to consumers when buying apparel, and this would be 80% or more consumers saying this fit, they want it to fit and look good on them. They have to be comfortable, good quality, and always a good price. Price matters. And comfort for those of you that are familiar with our efforts and our, our television, streaming, video campaigns, it focuses on comfort. This is one of the reasons we do that. Second area that matters to consumers are durability, style, color, softness, performance, and laundering. Specifically in laundering, do they have to dry clean it? It gets again to pay more. What do I have to do? And then when you look at the third area, and these are less than half of consumers that say this matters when they buy apparel, they talk about environmentally friendly brand and then where the apparel is made from. So it doesn't mean they don't care, but when they're buying other things take precedence. So let's jump into a couple of these to see what consumers truly mean. First, this chart's talking about the willingness to pay more for quality. In 2000, consumers hit a high 60% saying they would pay more for better quality garments. However, that was right at the time of fast fashion came into the marketplace. We started to see this directly impacted by the opportunity to pay less for garments, cheaper garments, and then dispose of them. So that number went down and it hit a low in 2011 of 45%. However, since that time, we have seen an attitudinal shift among consumers and somewhat of a move away from some fast fashion. Today in 2022, we are at a 15 year high of 52% of consumers saying, yes, I'm willing to pay more for quality. This number is exceptionally important as we potentially go into a recessionary period, definitely high inflation and what's occurring, consumers are gonna have to get more for their money when buying apparel because it's a discretionary purchase. And not only do we know that consumers say they'll pay more for quality, 73% say that cotton clothing is the highest quality that they can buy and that it lasts the longest. And this chart, we can see where consumers told us 65% said cotton clothing lasts the longest, period. That's three times more than clothing from polyester and then rayon. And again, this is attitudinal. It's what they're saying subjectively and what they believe to be true. But we always like to see what do they do? Because what you tell us sometimes is not what maybe actually happens. So we went in 2020, before the pandemic, we went into consumers' closets. And we had done this study many years ago as well to understand what was in their closet. But in 2020, we went in and we wanted to look at the, cl the clothing they had kept the longest and that they wear most often. What was the fiber content? 
And when you looked at that, the average fiber content of the oldest clothing items in their closet was 61% cotton. You can see the other fiber content there. Of those items, the 61% that contained cotton, 44% of those were 100% cotton. So cotton lasts longer. Not only did it last longer, it lasted about a year and a half longer than garments made from synthetic fibers in their closet. That's significance. That's durability. That's sustainability. You see how we start to put these messages together and how they can be relevant and resonate to consumers. So over the pandemic, we've talked about some things that accelerated in consumers' viewpoint today. And without a doubt, safety is part of that. We've asked this question for over 10 years at Cotton Incorporated, which fibers are safest for the environment? And we did see an increase in that as well over this time period. And what you'll see here is that there's a divide between natural fibers being safe for the environment and then those that are synthetic. 85% of consumers said that cotton is safe for the environment, followed by wool. And then there's a significant difference in those say in rayon, nylon, or polyester. However, when we put the term recycled in front of polyester, that 39% number being safe for the environment jumps to 54%. Words matter. So you start to see how consumers can be impacted by marketing and by messaging. Now, we know that's not any safer for the environment at all. However, that's not the consumer perception. We talked about purchase drivers. I showed you the first, second, and third level. The third level was environmentally friendly. This chart shows you those consumers that said environmentally friendly is important to them when buying clothing by age. And I share this with you because many people have the perspective that it's only the younger consumer that cares about the environment. It's primarily Gen Z. That consumer is 12 to 25 years of age. But here in this chart, you see clearly that it is the millennial generation that cares the most about the environment. And it makes sense. These consumers are 26 years of age to about 40, 41. They're in the midst of having families, purchasing products, putting their money. So they care about what happens and they're planning. But there's opportunity in all areas here to market to these consumers and talk to them about sustainability messaging. So I've mentioned a couple of different times that what consumers tell us and what they do can be very different. It's called the say-do gap. There's a whole science around this. And a good analogy, I think, is we're in the holiday season right now, approaching Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas and other holidays. A lot of times after the holidays, what do we say? We say, well, maybe we'll start exercising. We'll go to the gym. But what we do come January isn't always that. Intentions are the best, but that's not necessarily what happens. So it's the same with sustainability for apparel and in other categories. This is a study conducted by the Boston Consulting Group in June of this summer, 2022. And what they found is that 71% of consumers said, yes, I'm concerned about sustainability for apparel specifically. Then 38% less than half said that they would adopt a sustainable behavior, meaning they would buy sustainable clothing. They would take the time, search for, and look for it. 12% actually acted on that. I said, yes, I have actually done that. Check that box. And then 3% stated that they were willing to pay more. Now, this, as I mentioned in the Boston Consulting Group study, did not just ask about apparel, but it asked about other areas too. Travel, groceries, electricity, home purchases. And this was a pattern that held throughout all of those products. Good intentions, but what they're doing is different. So when we look at this, it doesn't mean that sustainability doesn't matter. It does matter. And it is got to be though relevant to the consumer. So we have to find a way to connect that and make it relevant. First, we have to understand apparel purchase drivers. We've done that. We know what those drivers are. Secondly, we have to promote benefits that resonate with sustainability. So it's fashion and sustainability. It's good for your budget and the environment. Find what matters to the consumer, what drives it, and then put the messaging in. We also see this happening in consumer packaged goods in other areas. Why do you turn on cold water when you wash a dryer? It's good for the environment and it saves you money. If you look at some of that marketing, you'll see that's what many different brands are doing as well. 
And then last but not least, we have to give them solutions. It has to be convenient for them to take an action to do that. They can't determine this themselves. So what are we offering in the industry to take that forward? So now what I want to do is I want to show you some of the work we're doing. Now, this will not be comprehensive. Uh, there's a lot more work that we do. But we'll start with activities that we started in 2018. And many of you that have heard me speak before will hear me talk about the consumer journey, awareness, engagement, and action. You have to know something first before you can become engaged and before you can take action. So this is our effort at going and starting to educate consumers about do you know your clothes? Do you know where they come from? And what do you know about that? Hopefully this starts to get them to care and then what about microplastics? So here you're going to see our nod to natural and to microplastics. <laughs> see, it, was that moving? That did not move on my side. Let's see if the other one is moving. It, it, it didn't move. No. And of course, we tested it this morning <laughs> and yesterday and it didn't move. So let me just take a moment. Let's see. Why that didn't happen. I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Let's try. <laughs> Right, so know your clothes because it matters. So that's the awareness play we're beginning with. Now look at what we started with laundry. were social media activations just to start the conversation with the consumer. Now, if we fast forward to the current campaign that we have in 2020 that ran, we wanted to integrate the work that consumers would see on television and streaming and digital content with the work about sustainability. Now, those commercials, as I mentioned earlier, were more about comfort and how that fit to that top tier level of purchase drivers. But these get directly to what they care about for sustainability. The first one is a nod toward food. You care what goes in your body. Shouldn't you care what goes on it? Check the label for cotton. And we're giving them a specific action. Check the label. The next one goes into nature. Your mother wants you to wear cotton. That's Mother Earth, obviously. And then third, you can see an Instagram activity that we did. And this again was about education. We're going straight for comparative. Polyester is derived from oil, the same oil that fuels our cars. True or false? They got it right. The headband on the young woman would grow. So it was interactive and educational, again, to start to bring them in to understanding more about sustainability. Also look for opportunities of relevant timeframes. So think of Earth Day, America Recycles Day, or World Cotton Day. We just celebrated the third one on October 7th. And we look for partners in the editorial space to talk about uh, activities for consumers and what goes on uh, there. And so what we did with the messaging for World Cotton Day was we wanted to talk to them about the different terms, again, that we talked about earlier in the presentation and why cotton would matter to them when purchasing jeans and how it always has their back. And t-shirts, jeans, and sheets that they sleep on, but also that it's good for the planet. So here we talk about terms like biodegradability, Microsoft, microplastic pollution, um, dirt to shirt. And then we have somewhere they can click, go back to the fabric of our lives and learn more about the benefits of cotton or sustainability light, as we like to call it for the consumer. In addition to that, you can see editorial on Farm to Closet that talked about agricultural practices and why that matters when buying your apparel. 
And then last but not least, you can see an influencer post. And with influencers, we always like to talk to them about objectives and messaging, but it's in their words and their terms. So this young woman talked about it's amazing that fashion can be sustainable. Kind to the earth is her term for sustainability and super cute at the same time. Again, relevance. Why does it matter? So when we talk about relevance and we've just come off the summer, many families, of course, go to the beach, you go to the ocean. And uh, for those of you that are familiar with the microplastics research and what goes on, it impacts aquaculture and what's happening. So what better time and what, what better way to be relevant than during Shark Week on TV? So we were talking about this and the opportunity to talk about the impact of microplastics in aquaculture. So during Shark Week, Shark Week, we sent social media posts out talking about what happens to endangered blue sharks when they ingest microplastics. You can see we had four different posts, and here's another one. Then it talks about much of our plastic waste can end up in sharks, so we should make less of it, less of the plastic waste. Choose cotton. It's natural. And then here's another call to action. We say shark mo movies may be scary, but plastic waste is way scarier. Again, we're looking to speak to the consumer in a way they'll understand it. Another way that we look for relevance to, without a doubt, this past year has been New York Fashion Week. You don't get any more fashionable than that. At New York Fashion Week, we partnered with a group called Revolve. It is a contemporary retailer. And uh, with, the, with the program we did, we curate cotton collections and take over their website. So more than 7,800 SKUs or items contain cotton, and we promoted those. Many of those, literally all of those, had the seal of cotton on those. Now, when you came to this event, at Fashion Week, you were able to come. We were with about 15 other brands. We all had our own room. When you walked into our room on the far right, you saw these beautiful clothing sitting there. All, of course, cotton content, high cotton content items. On the bottom of this, you can see that if you took your cell phone out, you could purchase those items there. There was also a store. But on the other three walls in the room, we had a 3D projection system. And on that, we ran an immersive video that talked about cotton and its sustainability. Now, the video was too large for me to share with you today, but we took excerpts. So below, I'm going to start that so you can see it. On this wall, we would talk about cotton as drought tolerant. And then we would look at it and we would talk about that it was irrigated with rainfall and rain would start on the video. Then innovations in dyeing processes and how that helps save water and energy. Then we went into microfibers in the waterways and you would see those floating through and what that meant on three walls. So you were surrounded by this. And we talk about synthetic clothing makes up 35% of those microplastics in the ocean. And then the impact on the ecosystem with fish going across all three walls. And at the end, a clear call to action help save our water. That's a play because we know that a lot of people will say cotton is a water hog in the industry, things of that nature, but it's not true. You can save your water by utilizing cotton. Check the label. So a clear opportunity. And we didn't stop there either. We invited our own Dr. Jesse Daystar to come and talk with influencers and the press at this event about cotton sustainability. And well, you can see this young influencer, she's amazed at what Jesse was telling her. So a lot of good information that we can share there in the industry and test and learns. We also take this information for sustainability to retailers and brands. This is a guide that we created to take to retailers and brands to understand these programs that we're producing and why it matters. For example, tackled hard issues, organic versus conventional cotton. They're not as different as you think. Land use by cotton and other crops. We don't use that much land. Water use, that we are drought tolerant and give them information they can understand even the hard subjects like pesticides and chemical applications, then of course, microplastics and microfibers. <clears throat> and all of this work is cited. Uh, many of you know that we're mandated by the USDA and that we are required to have third-party scientific research. So any of the marketing that we put out is verified. You'll never see a claim by anyone at Cotton Incorporated that is not verified. I'd also like to take a moment and step back and speak about pesticides for a moment. With that information, that is something that resonates with some in the supply chain in the industry. However, when we talk to consumers about that, it does not resonate. It's not top of mind for them. It's not awareness. When we have asked them about that, the feedback that we get is that they didn't really understand what pesticides were, but anything that it ended inside could not be good. 
So you think about things like homicide, suicide, those other types of words, they're not, they're not beneficial. So when and if we talk to the consumer, we will talk to them about protectants and chemicals and what that means, because we are trying to protect our crops with that. So the next term I wanted to delve into is one of my favorite ones at Cotton Incorporated, and that's textile recycling. Here you can see the Blue Jeans Go Green program started in uh, 2006. This is where we collect denim items and we recycle it to insulation. Um, to date, we have diverted more than 2,200 tons out of landfills. We're looking at collecting over 500,000 denim items this year alone. Uh, we have different programs that do this and different partners. It is a wonderful platform as far as messaging. You can see here cotton versus synthetic. When we go and we start talking about man-made fibers like polyester and what that means, that it doesn't degrade. So it gives us so many opportunities to touch the consumer. And not only do they get to recycle and keep something out of the landfill, but when they partner with retailers and brands, they usually get a discount as well. So this is an Instagram post that we did with PacSun, a contemporary retailer that's telling their followers uh, to buy cotton, look for 90% more cotton, bring in your recycled items. You can get $10 off. And don't forget that when you buy your new item to rock cotton and to wear it. Wonderful messaging and it's relevant to consumers at the point of purchase. And notice you can see the seal of cotton is involved in all of these to ensure they understand it's cotton merchandise. To date, since 2006, so over 16 years, we've had more than 500 companies involved with us in Blue Jeans Go Green. And just one that I'll call out for you is Zappos. They started out as a shoe retailer, entered into apparel, heard about our program, and they wanted to be involved. And it was really difficult to have a relationship with them. So we brainstormed with them. And what ended up happening is that a consumer can go to their website, Zappos for Good, download a mailing label, and free of charge can send in their denim to be recycled. They wanted to be a part of a program that was easy and convenient for them. Circular fashion, we talked about well over the majority of consumers did not have an understanding of what that is, but we're using the Blue Jeans Go Green platform to start to get that message out to consumers and talk about the circularity of cotton and that it truly is a circular item that does good. And you can also even see here that the creative is circular in nature. So there is some other messaging that's going on with that hashtag denim full circle. Now, I'm excited to share with you that this program that we've been involved in for 16 years in the U.S., uh, jointly with Cotton Council International, we went to the U.K., started before the pandemic, to create a recycling program there. And over the pandemic, could not travel, could not get there, but a supply chain was set up. Uh, by our two organizations to recycle cotton products. And it's not just denim products in the UK, it's all cotton products. They are recycled. And once they are recycled, they are turned into uh, mattress bedding to go and to be donated a portion of that to be donated to homeless in that area. It is a wonderful program that we've been able to start. We've had four retailers participate so far, and we have retailers in the U.S. that are interested in being involved in the one in the U.K. as well. There is a website, we will send that to you later along with other video links that you can take a look at. But, but the UK, why did we choose that area? And why did CCI? Because that's where many regulations are begun about the environment and what matters. So we wanted to be there and there was no other program for cotton that could exist, that currently exists that could do this. And when I was there, we met with all of the different suppliers. I just came back a few weeks ago and I wanted to share a couple of pictures with you because a picture speaks a thousand words. And look at this. When I walked into the person that is sorting for us in this program, these are all cotton items. That's a lot. And when I look at these, I don't just see the end product. I see our fiber that we started, that we grow sustainably. We make certain there's sustainable textile processing. And we go through, and what are we offering for the end of life? So this is now an opportunity for retailers and brands to be sustainable, to be responsible, and to look at this. So we're going to look at ways that this can be funded going forward and hopefully continue this program, not just in the U.S., the Blue Jeans Go Green, but Cotton Lives On in the U.K. as well. So carbon emissions, that's a new term fairly for the consumer. Well, in the majority do not understand what this means. However, 
We've been doing research at Cotton Incorporated in this, and we've already started with video content on cotton today to talk about that if you're able to sequester carbon in your closet, which you can when you have cotton clothing, that will do good things for the environment, specifically climate change. Now, that's simplistic terms. If you go to Cotton Day, you can learn more and read more about this. But we're just entering that market, just like 20 years ago, where we started talking to consumers and understanding we're starting with carbon today. And then many of you are familiar with our youth curriculum and youth messaging that we have available, and much of this information is contained there. This is targeted at children in grades second to eighth grade. Uh, we've had more than 250,000 downloads to date since this curriculum has been up, and it talks about agricultural practices, microplastics, recycling, check the label, and also uses other things, not just Cotton Incorporated, messaging from the USDA, the story of cotton, leaning on videos that we've created with other sustainability programs there. And you can find this information at ymiclassroom.com, but we'll send you that link as well. So lastly, I wanted to mention to you about textile certification and the awareness there, because there are many labels out at retail today, but consumers aren't that familiar. The number one label they recognize when looking at textile certification among these is USDA Organic. And that started in the early 2000s. And as many of you are familiar with, I'm sure it was on food and other places. So consumers have seen that. It makes sense they're aware of that. But these other uh, certifications that you look at, they're not aware of, and they don't really know what they mean either. And we showed them the symbols to see to make certain cases that pictorial. But while they don't know what that means, we know that more than eight out of 10 consumers are aware and recognize the seal of cotton. And that's been true for decades. But not only are they aware that it represents cotton content, and cotton containing items, 82% say that products with the seal of cotton are sustainable. We know that 85% of consumers would like to see more seal of cottons on products to help give them that nod. And that 80% of consumers say a brand using this logo cares about the environment. Now, next year in 2023 will be our 50th anniversary of the seal of cotton and the logo. Any way you look at it, for the cotton industry, the seal of cotton is sustainable. So that ends what I have to share with you today on the consumer perspective for sustainability. Monty, I'll turn it back to you.